All right, what's going on, you guys? Welcome to Ramadi Hub again. I'm your host, Dr. Hota, and today in this video, I will be talking about, I mean, in a different way because we have a bunch of updates I wanted to share with you all so you guys um, know pretty much everything what happened right after the game because, as you know, in the end of the game, you probably could watch the Casemiro bleeding through his nose and also Mariano Diaz, who... I mean, came down to the grass in a very, very weird position. And I thought at first that it was going to be something major. I mean, I mean, if you see the fall of the player, you may think that the player will break off completely his neck. I mean, it was completely weird, uh, you know, uh, a natural position. Uh, the way that he landed in the grass of the of the Martinez Valero, but let me tell you what, it was just the nose, I mean, it, it is not, I mean, I'm not, don't get me wrong, okay, I'm not saying this is just nothing, okay, it was, uh, uh, I mean, the nose was broken right after that, and actually, he will have a surgery really soon to uh, fix it, but apparently, the player will have to be 10 days, which is, of course, very good news, because if you see the fall of the player, I mean, at first, I thought it was going to be something really, really you know, big deal. I mean, in this kind of falls, man, when you are not, I mean, when you're falling down without controlling anything and it's like free fall, you can break your no your uh, your neck. So it was, it was terrible. I mean, the, if you see the footage, it's like frightening, man. When he saw the player landing on the grass, he was like, oh my God, he probably has broken his neck or something like that. But fortunately, it was not that. It was just the nose. And both of them, Casemiro and Mariano, were bleeding through the nose right at the end of the game. But it was not big deal because Casemiro will be available, according to the latest news that we have from Casemiro, Casemiro will be available for Carlo Ancelotti um, the next Wednesday against Shakhtar Donetsk. And the one who will not be available will be, of course, Mariano Diaz because he will take about 10 days to be back on track. But, uh, I mean, fortunately, it was not uh, more than that. So the other player we were really worried about that uh, we were really worried about it was Rodrigo Goes because as you know in the minute 16 Rodrigo Goes had to came had to come off the pitch just because he felt something in the hamstring and apparently it is not big deal either but it's not something like okay this is just rest and that's it no it's, it is not like that it is not that easy the player apparently will be out of the squad for one or two weeks so he won't be available for Carlo Ancelotti uh, over the next two weeks but let me tell you something the good news <clears throat> sorry the good news is in six days the next international the next and last international break of 2021 is going to kick off so I am I mean he won't be missing super important games or something like that we have a couple of games against Shakhtar Donetsk and another one against uh, Rayo Vallecano I think so it is not going to be a big deal because uh, the competition will be off for a couple of weeks but it's still um, a concern considering that this player is always on and off with the injuries. I mean, Rodrigo Goes, I think I've mentioned this before, Rodrigo Goes is a player that if he wants to become really competitive in this kind of competition in Spain, he must gain some more muscle and add up some more muscle to his body. It is almost impossible to face off defenders and rivals in the Spanish La Liga if you're weak, if you're short and you don't have strength and you know power enough in your body to go through them and be able to win duels and stuff like that and I mean every time you have to fight for a ball or something like that you will clash with some of the rivals and you have to be ready and you have to have the body that is required to be a right winger or left winger or attacker in the Spanish La Liga. So let's see what happens. And the other question that comes to the air, it is, okay, who is Carl Ancelotti going to use to replace Rodrigo Goes? My response to that is, I'd say Gareth Bale will be there because according to the medical reports, Gareth Bale must be really close to get back uh, they are saying by November or something like that, so he might be close to get back to Real Madrid and be available for uh, Carlo Ancelotti. So 
I wouldn't rule out the possibility for Gareth Bale to recover sooner than expected and be available for Carlo Ancelotti the next Wednesday against Shakhtar Donetsk. I mean, he might be very close to uh, be recovered, full recover and available for the squad. And if he can't to show up against or if he can uh, be still available for the Italian coach for the next Wednesday in the Champions, he might be um, available for the next Saturday. I think it's Rayo Vallecano, the next rival. So that is the other update. And I would say Carlo Ancelotti, if he has to pick between Marco Asensio and Gareth Bale, to me, Gareth Bale is still the first choice for Carlo Ancelotti. Let me tell you what, Marco Asensio, I mean, Carlo Ancelotti knows, is very aware Marco Asensio is not a right winger anymore and he should be playing in the midfield positions in more interior positions rather than in the, you know, right winger or super super far from the interior positions or very close to the sideline or something like that. When you place the Marco Asensio in these kind of positions, you know that he's not going to work. He's not going to perform really good and that's why I think Carl Ancelotti will pick to guard Bale ahead of Marco Asensio. So that is my opinion, which is, of course, very bad for Marco Asensio because there are so little, so few chances for him to get back to the midfield of Real Madrid and try to become the player he was supposed to become. I mean, the player we saw against Mallorca, in my opinion, is gone. Is no longer... Um, a possibility for Carlo Ancelotti. The reason for that is because after this super very good performances from the oldest ones, I mean from the players like Luka Modric, Casemiro and Tony Cruz in the midfield, I don't think that Carlo Ancelotti wants to take any risk anymore and that's why he did be trusting again in Gareth Bale in the midfield, it's going to be again for Luka Modric, Tony Cruz, and Casemiro. It's not anymore for Camavinga. It's not anymore for Marco Asensio or even Fede Valverde. So no more risks have to be taken, according to Carlo Ancelotti. And this kind of... I mean, it's pretty much the same midfield uh, Zinedine Zidane used to display in Real Madrid last season and over the last two seasons, right? So I think that Carlo Ancelotti is realizing that for him... It's peace of mind to have these three players displayed in the midfield of Real Madrid ahead of another player like Marco Asensio or even Camavinga. Camavinga is still a very young player and although he has shown everybody he has a lot of skills and he has a lot of talent and stuff like that, he's still young. Ancelotti is, by the way, a little bit upset with the player because sometimes he loses his mind and that's why he gets the yellow cards and all the stuff. So he prefers the security of the experience of this player ahead of the youth from Camavinga or even Marco Asensio, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I think that there no, there, there won't be more experiments in the midfield of Real Madrid, and that's why I'm thinking Marco Asensio is no longer a, you know, choice for Carlo Ancelotti, but I might be wrong, I don't know. So that is as far as Marco Asensio, the midfield, and all the... Um, and your players and all the stuff. But let me move on and talk about the player. I mean, the most important player, Vinicius Jr. This morning, Brazil is claiming is going crazy against the national team coach, Tite, just because they can't understand how he was able to leave him out of the squad list of Brazil for the next international break. It is something they can't understand at all. So today, some of the most important uh, journalists and, and commentators in, in Brazil, media, newspapers and stuff, were literally blasting the Tite for not calling to Vinicius Jr. for this next international break. I mean, for them, it's like, is this guy out of his mind? How is that possible you don't make the call to a guy who is presumably 
one of the best attackers in the Spanish La Liga, he's doing a great job. He's getting better day by day. He's scoring more goals, he's assisting, and he's actually a real danger for any single rival defense. So how is that possible that you prefer to drop him from the list and rather than that, to call another guy like Rafinha. Rafinha did a great job. Don't get me wrong at this point. Rafinha did a great job last time with Brazil. But, I mean, if you have to pick between Vinicius Jr. and Rafinha, who would you pick to? I mean, it's pretty clear to me. And apparently, and apparently so it is for the rest of Brazil. And fans and supporters and stuff like that. By the way, let me tell you something else about Vinicius Jr. Yesterday, during the game, he broke another record. And this time, he was... I mean, so far, we knew Vinicius Jr. is the fastest player in La Liga, right? Well, yesterday against Elche, he reached a peak of velocity of about 35 kilometers per hour. Beating the record from an... NFL player from the Tennessee Titans that let me let me find uh, let me find the name really quick because I have it here but it's Derek I think the name is Derek or something like that let me find it really quick it's Derek Henry used to have that record right and Vinicius Jr. broke it down yesterday against Elche beat that record and now he said Another speed record with 35.1 kilometers per hour. Is the fastest player in La Liga and also one of the fastest, uh, I, I know, uh, um, athletes in the world. I mean, aside of the uh, track and field athletes and stuff like that, he must be one of the fastest guys on earth. So that is great. This guy is not only scoring goals, right now he's the second one in the top scorer um, standing right uh, I mean right behind uh, Karim Benzema and nobody knows wh what he what this guy can achieve this season but apparently Vinicius Jr has exploded finally and now he has to find the limit but apparently it's limitless right now right now he's going crazy he's scoring goals he's the best player in Real Madrid he's assisting he's creating danger I mean against Elche he won six duels during the game. Six duels is not another average or standard number. It's the, very close to the numbers that used to have Neymar, players like Neymar or Messi in FC Barcelona. So that means Vinicius Jr. is a player who is achieving a lot of different records and numbers that in my opinion are going to make him one of the best players in the future. And by the way, let me tell you what, something else, another update. He was talking to a Brazilian media and he was asked about the possibility to play with Kylian Mbappe. And he said, man, this guy is the kind of player every single person wants to play with. And I'm looking forward to play with him. Me and like any other single Real Madrid player. So when you imagine this picture with in the attack of Real Madrid with uh, Kylian Mbappe, Vinicius Jr. and all this stuff. It's like, man, this is nuts. This is nuts and I'm looking forward to see it. So, okay guys, this is all what I have for you all today. Um, it's pretty much updates on the team and squad and players and stuff. I mean, uh, injured players and, and all these things. As you know, next Wednesday we are playing against Shakhtar Donetsk in the UEFA Champions League. So let's see what happens. I'm your host and see you in the next video.